You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. How can you win with Russian interference, though? That's, That's the real what thing. I'm scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He's an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice president for Canada? <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election, and he was put into office because the Russians interfered. Russia interfered with our election, attacked our democracy for the sole purpose of artificially placing someone at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They were successful. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president or elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. You said you believe that Russia's interference altered the outcome of the election. I do. We have a president who, if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I have an objection. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object because people are horrified. He's an illegitimate president. Our election was hijacked. There is no question. Congress has a duty to hashtag protect our democracy and hashtag follow the facts. John Lewis is completely right. There is a cloud of illegitimacy around the election of Donald Trump. The Russians interfered with his election. James Comey and the FBI interfered with his uh, election. The fake news industry interfered with his election. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president who got illegitimate foreign help. Do you believe Trump is a legitimate president? What I believe is that there's no question that the outcome of this election was affected by the Russian interference. Uh, there absolutely is a cloud of illegitimacy. So that legitimacy is in question, yes. So that was a very tainted election, and, and in that sense, it's, it's illegitimate. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. Stolen emails. Stolen drone. Stolen drone. Stolen election. Welcome to the world of unprecedented Trump. So do you believe President Trump is an illegitimate president? Based on what I just said, which I can't retract. <laughs> <laughs> he tweeted in February 2018, quote, the more we learn about the 2016 election, the more illegitimate it becomes. America deserves to know whether we have a fake president in the Oval Office. In the Russian attempt to, ha to have the election, and frankly the FBI is uh, weighing in on the election, I think make the, make, makes his election illegitimate. There was a widespread understanding that this election was not on the level. We still don't know what really happened, Isaac. I mean, there's just a lot that I think will be revealed, history will discover, but you don't win by three million votes and have all this other shenanigans stuff going on and not come away with an idea like, whoa, something's not right here. Seems to me that there's a cloud of illegitimacy that continues to hang over 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The outcome of the election was affected by their interference, and now we need to know, you know to what degree, uh, if any, the Trump campaign was actually in collusion with the uh, with, so with Russia. He knows he's an illegitimate president, so of course he's obsessed with me, and I believe that it's a guilty conscience. We actually won the last presidential election, folks. They stole the last presidential election. And Al Gore won that election. I think he won it anyway. Actually, I think I carried Florida. <laughs> Al Gore won the election nationwide and also in Florida, but the Supreme Court ruled the other way. Al Gore got more votes, but not enough to stay out of the Supreme Court where President Bush was elected 5 to 4. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. If all the votes were counted in Florida, that Al Gore would be president today and George Bush would be back in office. I come from Florida where you and others participated in what I call the United States coup d'etat. Since 2013, according to reports, Vice President Joe Biden, he claimed that Al Gore was the one who was elected president. And he claimed that the recount result was, quote, a bad decision. And never forget, dear friends, what they did in Florida to Al Gore and me, to all of us, to older Americans, to African Americans, to Haitian Americans, 
denied the right to vote and have those votes counted. I do believe that the projections were right in the first place at 7 o'clock when they called it for Gore. Let me tell you something, without a doubt, George Bush did not carry Florida, and it was not close. There's no question that you won the state of Florida. Oh, well, thank you, Charles. No, it's a question. <laughs> That's a we question. Will we will never know because the votes weren't, weren't counted. But, but the, and, and did, in your judgment, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. And there is no other way of saying it but be very blunt. Al Gore won the state of Florida in 2000, and we should never forget it. Most Americans, or a great many Americans, don't have confidence that the election of 2000 was fair. But I don't believe we lost. I, I believe we just failed to have all of the votes counted. The Supreme yeah, Court elected the president. 2004, yeah. Al Gore won the state of Florida in 2000, although not the presidency. We know we won this election. They know we won this election. And Americans know we won this election. I know some people want you to believe that the Gore campaign was a campaign that wasn't able to complete its mission. We did. Had all of those votes been counted in Florida, uh, I think Al Gore would be president today. We had more votes. We won. And we are never going to let the United States Supreme Court choose the president of the United States again. You should know by now, based on the fact that he lost the popular vote by more than a half million voters, and we don't know how many he lost by in Florida. There's no doubt in my mind that Al Gore was elected president. I rise to object to the fraudulent 25 Florida electoral votes. Really, we won the election in 2000, but they stole the election. I must object because of the overwhelming evidence of official misconduct, <laughs> deliberate fraud, chair, and an attempt the to chair must the remind Enron had already helped the Bush team with such favors as ferrying their rent-a-mob to Florida in 2000 to permanently halt the counting of legally cast ballots. It is signed by myself on behalf of my diverse constituents and the millions of Americans who have been disenfranchised by Florida's inaccurate vote count. The Supreme the, uh, Court, not the his, people of the United his, States, decided this election. Speaking to a Democratic group in Chicago Tuesday, he made it clear he thinks Al Gore was the winner. By the time it was over, our candidate had won the popular vote. And the only way they could win the election was to stop the voting in Florida. Catherine Harris, Jeb Bush, Jim Baker, and the Supreme Court hadn't tampered with the results. Al Gore would be president. I think that the issue before us today uh, is not who won or should have won the 2000 presidential election. That issue has been settled, not to my uh, belief, but it has been settled. Let's just drop the vice. Yeah. President, President Gore. That's all right. Al Gore should have been president of the United States. Al Gore uh, made it possible for George Bush to be the only appointed president in the history <laughs> of these United States. The Democrats have won the past three presidential elections. In 2000, unions turned out 25% of the vote, and Al Gore won. But the Supreme Court tampered? That's a large charge. The Supreme Court stopped the counting of the votes, and if they'd let the count go on, Al Gore would have got the necessary votes. The Supreme Court selected George W. Bush as the president. He was not elected. There is overwhelming evidence that George W. Bush did not win this election. What I observed uh, as a voter, as a citizen of Illinois, four years ago were troubling evidence of the fact that not every vote was being counted. Don't think that George W. Bush won the election uh, in 2000 against Al Gore because I, th I think he probably lost Florida and also that nationwide. If you invite me back on this show in about eight weeks, I think you're going to learn that Al Gore actually did get all the votes there. I felt what happened in Florida was a carefully worked out conspiracy. That many things could not go wrong in one, pl one state without there having been a conspiracy. Uh, and many, many different things did go wrong. Many tricks were pulled of various kinds. The vice president did win, but, uh, and I do believe that the majority of voters that intended to, to go to polls last year wanted to vote and cast their votes for Al Gore. I do believe that in, in, in terms of Florida as well. The court has been thwarting formation of the popular will. The most spectacular example being Bush versus Gore, where the majority by a 5-4 vote enjoined the counting 
of more than 100,000 ballots in Florida and essentially gave America its first court-appointed president. Even though Al Gore won the election, he won't take office. That election was stolen from the rightful winner. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm here today to talk about a stolen presidential election. I think in 2000, everybody thought, well, he did win the election, Al Gore. He started dividing America here in Florida by trying to take an election that I think any reasonable person would say he hadn't actually won. What happened in Florida will go down in history as a coup d'etat. Could we conclude, uh, is it possible that there was a conspiracy and Florida officials were involved in the conspiracy? Never have so many things gone so wrong in one place before. Why, how do all these things happen all at the same time in the same state? And is not it possible that there was a conspiracy that was very well organized? Why were the state police out there on that day, election day, checking license plates? And, and so forth. You know, how did all these things happen in one state at one time in one election? Is, is it possible that we ought to use the word conspiracy and not be afraid of it? I sure wish uh, Gore was president right now. He should be. Well, he actually got elected. Uh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> A battle that, by the will of the people, should have ended in victory. But tens of thousands of Florida votes either were not counted or tossed out in the 2000 presidential election. Five Supreme Court justices trumped the votes of 51 million Americans. Uh, we should have let the entire state be recounted so that it was clear um, that Al Gore actually won the state of Florida. And Al Gore won the election. We had the election stolen from us. And you must admit that. They stole it. And we need a leader to help us get revenge. I voted for Al Gore. He won the election. They usurped the the powers of the Florida Supreme Court and, and, and intervened, uh, it was a fix as far as we're concerned. You know, it, it, there's no polite way to talk about it except the fix was in. After the election, when you stole the election, you came back here and said, get over it. No, we're not going to get over it. You know it, I know it, they know it. We won that election. Constantly shifting vote tallies in Ohio and malfunctioning electronic machines which may not have paper receipts, have led to additional loss of confidence by the public. The right to vote has been stolen from qualified voters. The New Yorker reported that Kerry thought that, quote, proxies for Bush had rigged many of the voting machines. In 2004, the democratic process was thwarted. The 2004 presidential election in Ohio was riddled with unnecessary problems. Some machines malfunctioned, causing votes to be counted more than once. Or not at all. Based upon an inordinate number of allegations suggesting gross voting rights violations and misconduct, I join with my colleagues in objecting to counting the state of Ohio's electoral votes. And as in 2000, the votes of many who wanted to vote were not, in fact, counted. This last Friday night, I, I arranged to meet Senator Kerry at a fundraiser to give him a copy of my book. He told me he now thinks the election was stolen. The wife of John Kerry said she has lingering doubts about the legitimacy of the election. Her theory goes like this. Two brothers, she calls hard right Republicans, own 80% of voting machines in the U.S. Therefore, it would be easy to hack into the mother machines that control the electronic voting. There were numerous irregularities in Ohio including large percentages of rejections of provisional balloting, problems with voting machines. As we look at our election system, I think it's fair to say that there are many legitimate questions about its accuracy, about its integrity. There are still legitimate concerns over the integrity of our elections. The question, obviously, is how many instances we're not caught that we don't know about. Uh, number one, we've seen a lot of what I'll call honest glitches, where it just didn't work right, but also that these machines are hackable. A dishonest employee of the vendor, or a dishonest employee of a local board of elections, or simply someone who knows electronics uh, and has a computer at home, um, could hack into these machines and uh, put in a secret instruction to disregard every 20th Democratic vote or add 10% to the carrier, to the Bush vote or whatever. He might not ever know it. I agree with tens of millions of Americans who are wor very worried that when they cast the ballot on an electronic 
voting machine that there is no paper trail to record that vote. The numerous irregularities that occurred with the electronic voting machines in Ohio on November the 2nd of last year point to an unresolved national crisis. We cannot declare that the election of November 2nd, 2004 was free and clear and transparent and real. There must be independent testing of the voting machines used in Ohio. I'm not confident that the election in Ohio was fairly decided. We know that there was substantial voter suppression and the machines were not reliable. The members of Congress who have brought this challenge are speaking up for their aggrieved constituents, many of whom may have been disenfranchised in this process. Treating today's electoral vote count in Congress as a meaningless ritual would be an insult to our democracy unless we registered our own protest against the obviously flawed voting process that took place in so many of our states. Voters who wish to cast a vote for president or vice president can't approach the polls with certainty that their vote will be counted. One of the most significant problems in Ohio and in many other states was the lack of measures to ensure the integrity of electronic voting machines. In 2004, they caused Democratic voters in Ohio to wait for eight hours before they could cast their ballot. They turned the Department of Civil Rights and the Justice Department into the Voter Suppression Division with voter ID laws, voter purging, voter caging, voter intimidation. There aren't going to be any more election stealings. I do have one very firm statement to make. We won, but I didn't lose. I got the votes, but we won't know exactly how many because of how they cheated. I did win my election. I just didn't get to have the job. We were robbed of an election. Without voter suppression, Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. Andrew Gillum is the governor of Florida. Just using the word rigged, using the word steal, do you think it's dangerous going into 2020? I, I don't, because we can actually back it up. And so in response to what I believe was a stolen election, I'm not saying they stole it from me, they stole it from the voters of Georgia. Back to someone outside, ask if I'm ever going to concede. The answer is no. If she'd had a fair election, she already would have won. This is not a speech of concession. Because concession means to acknowledge an action is right, true, or proper. And I will not concede because the erosion of our democracy is not right. You refuse to concede and say that you lost. Do you stand by that decision today? A absolutely. If Stacey Abrams doesn't win in Georgia, they stole it. It's clear. It's clear. It was not a free and fair election. I think the election was stolen from the people of Georgia. I believe it was stolen from the voters. I think that Stacey Abrams' election is being stolen from her. The election was not fair. The process was not fair. Thousands of Georgians had their voices stolen because they were not able to cast ballots. And they cannot be guaranteed that their votes will be counted in 2020 if we don't do this right. If what happens to you happens nationally and we, we see uh, whoever runs for, whoever wins the Democratic nominee, if they say, actually, I can prove that there's a number of votes in every state that, that, and that, and that the same thing that you just described happens in multiple states, should they concede? I do not think we should concede an election until we know the results of an election. I still fundamentally believed it could be fair. And that's just not how life works. If it looks like it's cheating, it probably is. If it looks like it's rigged, it probably is. She would be the governor of Georgia today had the governor of Georgia not disenfranchised 1.4 million Georgia voters before the election. That's what happened to Stacey Abrams. They took the votes away. We've been raised to believe that it is invalid practice of coup to call questions. That if you want to run for office again, you've got to concede that you the election so that everyone knows you're a good sport. I'm not. You uh, notably did not concede. I did not. Okay, you acknowledged that he won, but you did not concede. Correct. Five months later, do you still feel like your opponent won through voter suppression? Yes. Reminder. She wrote.
Brian Kemp stole the gubernatorial election from Georgians and Stacey Abrams. I said that the election was stolen from Georgia voters. The process that took place during the legislative cycle was one that did not countenance and did not pay attention to the deep and real concerns of those who watched this election be stolen in the state of Georgia. It was stolen from the voters of Georgia. Georgia voters did not have their votes counted. They were not allowed to cast votes. They had their votes discarded. It certainly gave the appearance of unfairness. And I think there was um, unfairness. Stacey ran a great campaign. She probably won. And it was not fair to those who filled out absentee ballots. And depending on the county you sent it to, it either was counted or not counted, assuming you received it in time. Brian Kemp oversaw for eight years the systematic and systemic dismantling of our democracy, and that means there could not be free and fair elections in Georgia. As long as we have eligible American citizens who cannot cast a ballot, then the game is rigged. I am complicit if I say that that system is fair. Concession in the political space is an acknowledgement that the process was fair. And I don't believe that to be so. But I refuse to concede because concession means that the process was proper, that the result was true and right. And I cannot say that. I tend to say I didn't lose, I just didn't win. And I don't call it a loss, I just didn't win. But, um, yes, you did. Okay. Officially. Yeah. Officially. Put it this way, I didn't get to get inaugurated and that's problematic. Okay. But will I say that this election was not tainted? was not a disinvestment and a disenfranchisement of thousands of voters, I will not say that. Candidates, both black and white, lost their races because they have been deprived of the votes they otherwise would have gotten. And the clearest example is from next door in Georgia. Stacey Abrams should be governor leading that state right now. I was joking with Beth backstage when Cliff said, you know, she lost. I'm like, no, I just didn't win. Uh, because we don't know what really happened because of the miasma of voter suppression. I can't know for a fact that I would be the governor of Georgia but for the malfeasance and the mismanagement of Brian Kemp, but I know it's a pretty good guess. So I can't prove that I would have won, but I know we don't know because of how he behaved. Is he the legitimate governor-elect of Georgia? He is the person who won an adequate number of votes but that's to not, become the governor. Of, with, governor. All, with all due respect, and I respect where you're coming from, and I respect the, the issues that you're raising, you're not answering the question. Do you think it I was... Am, I, no, do, I, I, would I not he, do, You're not using the word legitimate. Is he the legitimate governor-elect of Georgia? He is the legal governor of Georgia. You see, I'm here to tell you that just because you win doesn't mean you're won. And he said to me that you did not lose, you just did not win. Yes. So we're going to talk about that. Bad news is that we didn't get the victory we secured. And the thing is, we will never know empirically that I got more votes because we will never know which votes didn't get counted. This was not fair, it was not right, and it is deeply improper that someone could ascend to that role having performed so basely and so crassly against the very people he is now supposed to represent. The election was not fair, the process was not fair. So you don't feel that you lost fair and square? I do recognize I am not the governor of Georgia, but I do like to point out something that is true for me and for many in our state, and that is we won. I'm not saying it's going to be legit. It's the increase in the prospect of being illegitimate is a direct proportion of us not being able to get these, these reforms passed. Right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. It's not as if it's just Republicans who have monkeyed around with elections in the past. Sometimes Democrats have to. You know, whenever people are in power, they're, you know, they have this tendency to try to, you know, tilt things in their direction. 